Right, let's discuss all the drama from another thrilling weekend of F1 action as Max Verstappen equaled his 2022 record of 15 wins in a season by taking victory at the United States Grand Prix. And Lewis Hamilton was disqualified post-race. Well, I'm delighted to say we're joined by F1 presenter Matt Gallagher to review the events. Uh, Matt, thanks so much for joining me. Um, it feels like so much happened. So let's start with Max Verstappen, who came from sixth on the grid to claim the 50th win of his career. What did you make of his performance? It was amazing. It was what we've kind of become used to with Max Verstappen in the last few years. He's got a car that clearly he's able to work uh, to the absolute maximum. And um, th there is that sense of inevitability whenever Max, even if he has a, a bad qualifying like we saw on Friday, because it was a sprint weekend, you know, millimetres over the white line, which caused him to then be sixth on the grid. But there was still, we, we all knew he would come back somehow. Um, I don't think we expected it to be this close, especially after what we saw in the sprint, uh, where Max basically just drove off and had uh, amazing race pace. You know, he had uh, some brake issues throughout the race, which he was managing, and you could tell he was getting a little bit hot under the collar, but he still came out on top. And obviously it was a milestone moment, but, but what did you make of the crowd booing him when he actually got up onto the podium? Because obviously that's been a, a massive talking point. It's never nice to see. I'm not a fan of it. You know, these, these drivers risk their lives uh, for our entertainment. And, um, yeah, th there were plenty of sort of rumours, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly why he was being booed. Um, but one thing we did hear was uh, the chanting of Checo, Sergio Perez, uh, his teammate's name. Um, so you do wonder why exactly uh, Max is getting um, that, that level of, of booing whilst, you know, 50 wins, 94 podiums. He's hitting a massive milestone at 26 years old. Um, but yeah, obviously Sergio Perez isn't performing to the level that he wishes he could be right now. He has shown that he can be on a par with Max, especially at the start of the year. But perhaps it's just a level of frustration from, from some fans. Yeah. Um, just last one on Max, because you, you spoke about the sprint a minute ago, saying that he was getting a little bit hot under the collar. He's expressed his you know, continued dislike for that format, saying it restricts the time available to actually make changes to the car. Do you think these calls need to be well, resisted? I'm actually of the exact same opinion as Max. Um, but when we recorded our podcast, I'd said pretty much word for word what Max had said later on in the day. So it was, I'm, I'm very much of the case of the sprint is good in the sense of like Formula One trying something new. And I'm absolutely open to that. But the problem is at the moment, it is just its own separate event for eight points. And it's even more meaningless when you have a driver dominating and the points don't really matter, especially for, for the championship fight. So for me, there's plenty of opportunity and, and ideas flying around. We spoke to Carlos Sainz a little while ago and he suggested that a few drivers were down for a reversed uh, grid for the sprint, which I'm sure the slower drivers probably are very keen to have a reverse grid. But uh, mm -hmm. there's plenty of routes they can go down, different tyre compounds that doesn't ruin us uh, the race for Sunday because we did get a, a little snapshot on Saturday as to, as to how quick Max would be. And, and Max, even Max, feels the same way. Yeah. Um, just want to talk about Lewis Hamilton because, of course, we heard the news earlier that he lost his second-place finish after being disqualified. His Mercedes failed a, a physical floor and plank wear inspection. Just for people who have no idea what that is, just, just explain how serious it is. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's a case of the rules are the rules. It's the plank, the wooden plank on the underside of the car. Essentially, it can't wear to a certain, it can't wear more than a certain level. And if it does, you get disqualified. Um, and it's kind of from the nature of the sprint weekend that the track is incredibly bumpy, uh, which doesn't help the car. They only had one practice session. They couldn't really test uh, the setups for all different conditions for the cars. And, and that caught out both Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc, who were both disqualified but the, the interesting thing is that only four cars were tested Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. You then question if 50% have failed that test how many more got away with it and it does feel a little bit strange to me that it is only four that are tested especially if two are caught uh, having these problems so uh, I feel like some drivers got away a little bit scot-free. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. Um, just, just still on Lewis Hamilton then, of course, ultimately it was disappointing for him, but he has said that he felt the Mercedes upgrades had a real impact on the car in qualifying. What does that mean? Is that a bit of a turning point? Could we really see Mercedes challenge Red Bull from now on? I think everyone that is a neutral fan or has a fan is a fan of a driver that isn't Max Verstappen is hoping <laughs> that there is some kind of turning point, just purely from a competition side uh, of the sport. It's hard to say. I think we're going to go to Mexico and Red Bull are going to trounce the, the opposition. They were quick when Mercedes were dominating uh, around Mexico. So uh, I would imagine that we might well be thinking, OK, maybe the turning point isn't just yet. 
Adrian Newey was, uh, there was uh, chatter about him saying to, to Eddie Jordan around the fact that he'd be very surprised if any, any teams catch them in the current uh, ge generation of, of regulations. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to sort of get too excited just yet, but look, it's really exciting to see that second fastest team constantly chopping and changing. And if they all catch up to Red Bull, we could be in for a thriller if if they catch up. <laughs> I mean, if it's not Mercedes, then who? Because like you said, it's kind of what fans want to see, isn't it? They want to see another team mount a, a real challenge to Red Bull. Well, look, I'm a Ferrari fan. I'm a little bit biased, but even <laughs> I, as a Ferrari fan, uh, struggle to see potentially them being the ones to close the gap. McLaren of recent times have looked unbelievable uh, and have actually uh, challenged Max at times, Silverstone being, being one example. So I would think Mercedes, McLaren, look, Ferrari have great pace in, in qualifying. It's just being able to, to not chew those tyres up as quickly as they do and to potentially do better strategy calls as well would help. Charles Leclerc being one, but obviously he got disqualified anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, but the, the, the teams are there. It just depends on how big of a jump Red Bull will make for next year because I'm sure they probably put down their tools for this year's car quite early, considering they just dominated. Yeah, and I, I suppose sticking with Red Bull and talking about them in the future, there was a, a really welcome return for Daniel Ricciardo, who was back after missing f five races with that broken hand. What do you make of those potential reports about him returning to Red Bull in the future? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think he's had enough time to really get the hype up as to whether he'd do any better than Sergio Perez currently. Um, so for me, I'd need to see a few more races from Danny Rick through to the end of the year. It'll be exciting to see if he can get close to Yuki Tsunoda. If anything, for us to get excited, he'd need to be beating Yuki Tsunoda by the end of the year if we're going to think, oh, you know, Danny Rick back to Red Bull. This could be really exciting. Um, but look, I, I, it's, a, it's a worldwide sort of... Everyone feels the same way about Daniel, that, that they'd love to see him do well. He's such a great character. Um, but, yeah, time will tell, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and just lastly, Matt, I mean, action comes thick and fast. We've got the Mexico Grand Prix taking place this weekend. What can we expect from the circuit there? Well, the altitude is a big talking point, and Red Bull have always sort of um, been really good at those sort of conditions. Uh, Brazil as well uh, that we've got coming up. So <laughs> I don't want to say don't tune in, because definitely do. I will be there no matter what. Um, but I think Red Bull will be incredibly strong. Um, I'd like to think Mercedes will be there again. Um, but it's such a different track to, to, to what we've just seen that, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. But be prepared for a Red Bull win, I think. <laughs> uh, right, we'll be tuning in. Don't worry about that. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Lovely speech. Chat to you soon. Cheers. Take care.